Welcome back to the second segment in the role and operation of courts within the English legal system or indeed CLRI. Now before the break I flagged up that one of the things that you have to take on board is that there is this uh, notion of negotiation versus adjudication. The point being of course that adjudication is really what the courts do and I said to you that there are of course some essential differences between negotiation and adjudication. I'll start off with those and then I will go straight in to looking at the structure of the courts. Now if we look at negotiation and adjudication, what are the differences? Well, the primary one of course is the role of an authorized third party who gives judgment. So in an adjudication that's what you have. You have uh, this presence of some overriding authority structure with an ability to enforce the judgment which of course may vary. That's what you get in an adjudication. You don't have that in a negotiation. Equally, when you look at the use of third party intervention and the extent to which any third party uh, is institutionalized, we see that intervention may take the form of mediation by some go-between, a person of prestige who seeks to aid but cannot force the parties to reach agreement tends to be what we're looking at when we look at, for example, the negotiation process. In an adjudication, of course, you get a binding judgment and the parties have to, of course, abide by that. Just as an aside, when you look at arbitration, this is where the parties agree to accept the judgment of some third party, uh, but it is not necessarily in the formal court structure. Now then, what I want us to look at is the court structure within England and Wales. Now, first off, it is very important that you draw uh, two basic distinctions uh, as it relates to trial courts and appellate courts, equally between civil courts and criminal courts. Now let's start off with trial courts. The function of a trial court, for example a county court, is to hear cases at what is called first instance. That is, they make a ruling on the issue of fact and law that arise in the case. So when you hear at first instance or the judge at first instance or the case at first instance, it means the first time that the matter was heard in a court before a judge. Now, when you look at appellate courts in contrast, the function is to reconsider the application of legal principles to a case which has already been heard by a lower court. Some appeal courts also have jurisdiction to reconsider disputed issues of fact. Now, the fact of the matter is, generally, you can have an appeal on law, but there is some limited jurisdiction to reconsider factual situations. So, for example, disputes about the offense which have led up to the legal action. So any one case may well be heard by more than one court before the issues are finally resolved. As it relates to rights of appeal, they are sometimes complex and are governed by a whole set of procedural rules. Now tri trial and appellate functions are often combined within one court. The system is not simple enough to say court X is solely a trial court, court Y is purely an appellate court. And you will see, for example, in the high court, the high court can be a trial court. You could bring your action in the high court simply on the basis of the value of the claim. Equally, the high court may very well be able to uh, deal with appellate matters coming from, say, a court lower down in the hierarchy. So it is not as straightforward to say uh, uh, cortex is an appellate court, court Y is a, 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 a trial court. It may very well be that you have a particular court. So for example, the Court of Appeal, yes, its jurisdiction is uh, largely an appellate jurisdiction. You're not going to have a court st a case starting in the Court of Appeal. Now, civil and criminal law are significantly different, both in their aims and 
and also their objectives. They employ different legal procedures. Criminal law mostly involve rules which are laid down by the state for citizens. Civil law governs relationships and transactions between citizens. There's also the public-private law distinction, of course, because public law is generally law relating to matters which involve the state as one party. So criminal law, some aspects of family law, for example, to do with local authority, children in care and so on, are public law issues. Private law issues are as against individuals. So you could have a matter which is a, a private civil law matter, but you could also have a matter which is a public civil law matter. So you could have a family law matter, which is a public law matter. So when you look at the classifications, certainly it is something to take on board. Administrative law is a special type of civil law which mainly concerns the interaction of citizens with the state, especially where the state is making decisions which affect individual citizens. Now, administrative law cases are mostly heard in tribunals which are specific to the subject, while civil and criminal cases tend to be heard in main courts, such as the county court and, of course, the crown court. Now, the courts, from the highest to the lowest, is something that I'm going to now look at. Now, I will emphasize that Law Sessions is not here to go through a complete and comprehensive guide because that would be tedious. We simply would not have sufficient time. Law Sessions is here to try and make what you're doing become clearer and more understandable. As such, when you look at the depth of what the courts do, I am going to refer you to your textbooks. I'm going to refer you to subject guides if you have those and other further and detailed reference to look at them in more depth. What I'm hoping that I can do here is to at least pique the interest for you to go and do the reading. And as you do the reading, you say, ah, I quite understand this now. That is the general idea. Let's start off with looking at the Supreme Court in England and Wales. Was that, well, as you may or may not know, this was, of course, the House of Lords, or rather the Judicial uh, Committee. And so what you look at is you have or had the House of Lords where you had them sitting within the House of Lords, which is the upper chamber of the uh, a second of the bicameral chamber of the uh, parliament. But what we've had since is a complete change. Since 2009, we've had a nice, brand new, shiny building called the Supreme Court. And we've had the judges come out of uh, where they were before and now sitting in the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court is, of course, the final point of appeal, although a small number of cases each year may very well be referred by them to the Court of Justice of the EU, which has jurisdiction in relation to matters of European community law competence. Now, the Supreme Court of the United Kingdom is the Supreme Court in all matters under English law, Northern Irish law, Scottish civil law, however that may change if Scotland decides if this ref referendum holds. Now, it is the court of last resort and it is the highest appellate court in the UK. Now, the Supreme Court also has jurisdiction to resolve disputes relating to devolution in the UK and concerning the legal powers of the three devolved governments or laws made by the devolved legislatures. So, of course, when you look at the devolved powers, you're looking at Scottish Parliament, the Northern Ireland Assembly, and of course the Welsh Assembly. The Supreme Court was established by part three of the Constitutional Reform Act of 2005, and basically they started working on the 1st of October 2009. Now it assumed the judicial functions of the House of Lords, which were of course exercised by the Lord of, Lords of Appeal in ordinary, who we generally refer to as the Law Lords. Now the idea of the doctrine of parliamentary sovereignty, which provides that the court is limited in its powers in respect of the judiciary is something that you must 
be mindful of. If you're going to get a question in this area, and I've seen a question on law exam papers that says, uh, that has said in the past, um, the Supreme Court is only a Supreme Court in name only, or the Supreme Court of England and Wales is the Supreme Court, but it is not a Supreme Court. And we will come to that distinction in a minute. But what I want you to bear in mind is that the court is limited in its powers of judicial activity as it relates to constitutional matters. It is limited. Unlike, let's say, the constitutional and supreme courts of some other countries, the Supreme Court in England and Wales has a very restricted remit. When you look at the United States, for example, and there are a couple of very well-known cases, regardless of whether you live in the United States or not, that are tend, which tend to be very uh, popular, very well-known. Uh, when you watch uh, US elections, they tend to take on some significance. There are two cases of particular importance from the US, and that is uh, uh, Rowan Wade and uh, Brown versus the Board of Education, very well-known cases. Uh, one had to do with, of course, segregation uh, laws in respect of blacks. Uh, that's Brown v. Board of Education. And Roe v. Wade, of course, looks at abortion rights. The point is that when you look at the, uh, the Supreme Court of the United States, it struck down those uh, particular legislations which looked at uh, those areas by saying that they were unconstitutional. Unfortunately, within the UK, something like that couldn't happen because the Supreme Court doesn't have that power. The Supreme Court, for example, let's say tomorrow the government decided that it no longer wanted the um, Human Rights Act to be an act of parliament or to do with anything to do with the UK, and they repealed it. Well, if, for example, I started pleading that by getting rid of the act, I no longer have a right to a fair trial and I come to the court and say you need to find uh, that the Supreme I come to the Supreme Court and I say you need to strike down that law that said that they could repeal the Human Rights Act because now I have no uh, way to rest my rights as to a right to a fair trial Supreme Court would say no that's outside the ambit of our powers because frankly we do not have that power at all now they are limited, therefore, and restricted. And this means that it cannot overturn any primary legislation made by Parliament precisely because of the concept of parliamentary sovereignty. However, it can overturn secondary legislation if, for example, the legislation is found to be ultra-virus of the powers which was given in the primary legislation which allowed it to be made. Equally, under Section 4 of the Human Rights Act, the court may make a declaration of incompatibility, which means that it believes that the legislation subject to the declaration is incompatible with one of the rights of the European Convention of Human Rights, and, such, uh, and as such, a declaration can, of course, apply equally to primary and secondary legislation. Now, the legislation itself is not overturned by the declaration. Please bear that in mind. Parliament is supreme. But powers under Section 10 of the Act are triggered, which allows a minister to amend the legislation by statutory instrument to remove that incompatibility. As such, when you look at the uh, Supreme Court, it is for all intents and purposes the Supreme Court of the United Kingdom, but not necessarily a Supreme Court because of the functions. Now, all appeals to the Supreme Court are about the meaning of law rather than the evidence in a case which raises points of law of general public importance. Now, the Appellate Committee of the House of Lords, um, or rather uh, the Supreme Court as it, as it is now, it was the Appellate Committee of the House of Lords, it does receive appeals, both civil and criminal, from the courts in England and Wales, uh, Northern Ireland, and certainly only the civil cases from Scotland. Now, the Supreme Court also sit, the same law lords who sit in the Supreme Court 
also sit as the Judicial Committee of the Privy Council to hear appeals from those Commonwealth countries whose legal systems are still linked to the UK and have the Privy Council as their final court of appeal. The point then is that you are, there are uh, these judges who sit, there are usually 12 such judges. The point about the Supreme Court is that I would ask you to consider what are the criticisms? Has it just changed its name from the House of Lords? Is it a Supreme Court in name only? Uh, where I would suggest you look is, look at what other Supreme Courts do. So a Supreme Court, so for example, the Supreme Court in, for example, the US, as I say, can strike down unconstitutional statutes. In the UK, that can't be done. So is it that the Supreme Court is no more than the final appellate court and nothing more? We will consider the other courts after this, but please bear that in mind in respect of the Supreme Court.